Hi friends, how was your Christmas? Did you do anything? Tell me in the comments what you did, how your day was, and also what you're cheersing me with today. Are you hungover? Are you hydrating? Let me know, let me know. Cheers. Mine is obviously water. There's no lemon in it. Who even am I? Back with some more horrific wedding fails. Entitled people ruining the wedding, bridezillas, we got it all. Oh boy. Had a small wedding in the Colorado Rockies. Oh, that sounds gorgeous. This one couple did all of the below. Him, we have a list. Brought their seven month old without asking. Ooh, I bet they cried a lot. Drove from Texas and expected to stay with us in our home at Denver before traveling to the mountains about 1.5 hours away. They did stay with us. Husband is too nice. <laughs> they criticized our house, too small, walls were paper thin, that's annoying. Thought they could do the wedding in a day trip from our house, did not buy a hotel room. My parents had an extra one that the guys were getting ready in and gave them it. Stanley Hotel, $800. They didn't offer to pay or say thanks. They actually asked my dad for his credit card. You're kidding. Woman wore white to the wedding. This is literally a nightmare. Man forgot to buy groomsmen's vest, had to go to the mall the day before the wedding to improvise. Did they do anything to prepare for this wedding? Baby cried during service and wedding coordinator had to escort them out. Saw that coming, called that in the beginning. Rented a cabin for the weekend for the wedding party. Lots of partying and drinking. They brought the baby without asking us and then got mad slash turned off lights when we were too loud. We paid for it, by the way, about $400 per person. Man kept knocking on our door on our wedding night as we were having intimacy asking if we saw his keys. They didn't buy us a gift. To top it all off, put the cherry on top, they didn't buy us a gift. Oh, and I found out later that the man's mom offered to fly to Colorado from Texas to babysit the baby while they were at the wedding slash cabin and they declined. Yeah, you need to pick your friends better. <laughs> These are not friends. <laughs> the bride sang Someone Like You by Adele, an iconic breakup song directly to the groom during the ceremony. The marriage lasted nine months. What? For you to, don't forget me. That is a breakup song. That's like talking about someone you love being in love with somebody else. Did you interpret those lyrics as something different? Why would you ever sing that song at your wedding? Mine's actually funny. I would say it was the worst thing that happened, but it really wasn't that bad. We got married in a big open field under an apple tree. My uncle walked me down the aisle and we started from pretty far away. So there was a lot of open field from coming to the aisle and where the seats were. We started walking and I suddenly realized there are crickets everywhere in the grass and the motion of my skirt on the grass is making them jump right onto slash into it. I had several layers of English net and so I had some in between the layers crawling up. Ooh. Thankfully, I had a waist seam so they couldn't get past that point. I had probably close to 20 in my train and ended up with one in my hair as well. My uncle and I were trying not to crack up. He just kept saying, just keep walking, it's fine. As I was shaking my skirt, trying to walk at the same time. My bridesmaids spent a few minutes getting the crickets out of my skirt once we got down the aisle and everyone was laughing, including me and my husband. They say crickets are good luck, so that's a plus. Married two years this August. Girl, good for you. I am so proud of you for like laughing that off and remaining calm because I don't know if I would be. I get crickets are harmless, but like, ooh, just the idea of them all up on your wedding dress and all up in your business and uh, they're everywhere and all the pictures. Like, I don't know if I would have stayed that calm, but what else are you gonna do but laugh it off? My cousin was marrying a guy named Chad who was a total Chad. <laughs> When it got to the vows and the priest said, for richer or poorer, the groom replied, for richer or richer. His side of the aisle goffed like it was the height of comedy. My cousin's side was dead silent. They were divorced in three months. Oh, I don't know. I find it kind of funny. <laughs> Do you guys find that funny? Would you laugh at that? I feel like that's something you could laugh off. Divorced three months 
At that point, you gotta be like, did you even try? Even as a kid, I knew the marriage was doomed when the priest said, you may kiss the bride, and the bride turned away so that the groom's kiss landed on her cheek. They had been divorced for a long time. That's so awkward. Everyone knows that that moment is it. That's the photo op. That is where everyone does the oohs and ahs and they clap. And you reject the kiss? You just friend zoned your like new husband, your brand new husband. In the men's room at the reception, I overheard the groom telling his buddies how excited he was about the honeymoon destination because there were going to be tons of hot women there. The marriage didn't last long. Priorities. You're excited for your honeymoon, not to celebrate your marriage with the love of your life, but because there will be hot women there. Don't get married. You can go on your own honeymoon destination as a single man and do whatever you want with these hot women. I worked weddings for a living and once saw the best man get loaded, give a speech, profess his love for the bride, and say how they had slept together two nights prior. Buddy, that was the time and place that you picked? And two nights before your wedding? Why even just be, even if you like, just be with that person if you wanted to be with them. End it with your current groom and say, I'm sorry, I gotta be honest. I'm in love with your best friend. Still really friggin' shitty of you. Let's not take that away. But why get married? Why even do that to them? What a waste. You don't even want to be married. My brother and sister-in-law thought it would be fun to have their dogs walk down the aisle after their flower girl spread the flower petals. The dogs thought that midway down the aisle was the perfect place for pooping. Photo op on the white runner. You had to have like expected that to happen or thought about the possibility. You chose a white runner out of anything, number one, for dogs to be walking down, but you know dogs are gonna pee, they're gonna poo, they're gonna mark their territory. They're dogs, it's what they do. I once thought about having my little Lila, my best friend at my wedding day. I'm like, how cute would it be to have someone walk her down the aisle? But she, that girl's rampant. She is wild. I don't trust her. She would piss everywhere. I just know it. I just know it. I love her. So I thought, I'm like, if I ever get engaged, let's knock on wood. It's a new year. Who knows? <laughs> Marry me. Um, I would love to have her like a picture with her in my engagement photos, you know? If she can't be on the wedding day, how cute would it be for like me and little Lila and my little engagement years? Anyways, during his speech, the divorced father of the groom started going on and on about how much better his new wife was compared to his old wife. So the old wife is groom's mother. So she's probably there at the wedding and you're going off of how much you love stepmom and how much better she is than mom. <sighs> I have divorced parents, okay? And even they would not do this. Like that is a nightmare. That is so embarrassing and so, even if you feel that way, whatever, you feel that way inside, okay? You're divorced for a reason, but on your wedding day in a speech, oh. An ex-boyfriend of the bride got super drunk at the reception. Why? Why is there an ex-boyfriend of the bride at the wedding? How recent? was ex-boyfriend. Cause technically I'm gonna be real with you guys. I will have an ex-boyfriend at my wedding. Like hundred percent. My high school ex, okay. High school as in when did I even, oh my God, I'm so old. Like 14 years ago, <laughs> uh, we're still good friends and we all have the same friends. And Matt and my ex-boyfriend are actually great friends. Like my ex, my high school ex, I don't even like calling him an ex cause I forget. We've been childhood friends since kindergarten. We dated in high school did not work out and stayed friends. Uh, he made the joke to like Matt and I and was like, so which side am I gonna sit on? Like with Matt's side or mine? It was funny, but we're all really good friends. So technically I would have an ex-boyfriend. I don't consider an ex-boyfriend because they're from high school and Matt is totally down. You can still technically have an ex-boyfriend. So how recent was the sex? Anyways, they got drunk, uh, super drunk at the reception and started rambling loudly about how the marriage was wrong and how she was the love of his life. He was there with his new and soon to be ex-girlfriend. Oh my God, this just painted a very different picture. Ugh. So your ex is still in love with you, even though he's dating somebody else and they're there. Like, what is with the timing? Why profess your love now? That's all I got you guys. 
I'm getting out of here. Stay classy out there, stay sassy, and I'll see you tomorrow.